Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering statics, moment about a point, and this will be the eighth part or eighth problem in this particular moment series. So what we have here in this problem is that we have a 450 Newton force applied here at A as shown, and we have to determine two parts for this problem. We have to determine the moment of this 450 Newtons about point D, and then we have to determine the smallest force applied down here at point B that creates the same moment about point D that we got earlier. All right, well, Let's just begin with writing what moment actually is. Well, moments will be a rotation, which is equal to a force times a perpendicular distance. So you have to keep in mind that you're dealing with a perpendicular distance. So for example, whenever you have a force in the x direction, you will be multiplying that by a y dimension or a vertical dimension. So you have a horizontal force multiplied by a vertical dimension, and then you would switch that where you would have a vertical force times a horizontal dimension if you're dealing with simple x and y coordinates. So with our first part here in part A, we are looking for the moment at that point D that is caused by the 450. Now, what you could do is that you could just extend this 450's line of action until you cross this position of D where it forms a 90 degree angle there, where you would take your total 450 Newtons multiplied by this distance right here, which forms the 90 degrees. Well, we're not gonna do that because that can be really cumbersome when you have larger problems. Simple problems like this, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, you can get there, well, it's not easy, but it, it can be if you if you're, uh, if you work like that. But if you have more forces, it becomes a little, little troublesome to do that. So since our dimensions here are given in the X and Y, what we're going to do is we are going to form this force in its vertical and horizontal components. Now, since my force is going down and to the left, I know my vertical has to be going downward and my X force has to be going to the left. So let's go ahead and let's find this Fy and this Fx component for my 450. Well, my vertical component of the 450 will just be 450 Newtons. And since my angle of 30 degrees is off of the vertical, the y, I'm going to deal with cosine of 30 degrees because cosine is adjacent, and we get 389.7 newtons in that downward direction for the vertical component there at A. Well, let's repeat that process for our x here, and we have 450 newtons, and this time we'll be dealing with sine of 30 degrees. Well, because the angle is not touching the X, the X is opposite that angle, opposite deals with sine. And when we calculate that out, we get exactly 225 Newtons there to the left. So what we have going on is we've replaced this 450 with our Fy of 389.7 and our Fx of 225. Now, in order to get our moment, we are going to sum moments since now, instead of one force, we have two forces. So now we're going to have to sum moments of each force about point D. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take counterclockwise as a positive notation. You can take clockwise as positive if you want to. It's just up to you which way you want to do it. All it does is affects your positive and minus signs. So we're going to look at each force separately, one at a time, plug them into this equation, and then move on to our next one. So let's start with our Fy. Well, our Fy right here, we're going to put in its value of 389.7 Newtons. And now we need to multiply by a perpendicular distance. Well, since I have a vertical force in the Y direction, I need a horizontal distance to get it to D. Well, what is my horizontal distance over to D from Fy? Well, that's a total of 300 millimeters right here. And let's give myself a little bit more room here. <clears throat> Last thing you have to determine is how is it rotating about point D? Well, this is where you just tether a fictitious line. You can use a rubber band if you're working in pen and pencil. And then you will just move this force in the direction that it is going. And eventually you will see it try to rotate like this about point D if this dashed line remains fixed 
and does not change its length. Eventually, this force will try to spin or knock this line about D in the clockwise rotation. So since it is rotating clockwise, we are making it negative because we're taking counter as positive. Alrighty, well, there's our first force of Fy. Now we're going to look at Fx, which is 225 newtons. And now I need a distance to get it over to D. Well, I have a horizontal force. Now I need a vertical distance. Well, my vertical distance from Fx down to D is 125 millimeters there. And now we have to determine which way it is rotating. Well, once again, if you set a fixed position here at uh, A, it can rotate about point D and you smack it here onto the left, this thing would rotate this way around point D, which is counterclockwise. That's the way it would swing about D. And we're taking counterclockwise as positive, so this would be a positive 225 times 125 millimeters. Well, that's all we would have because we only have two forces, so we only have two sections here. So when we calculate this out, we get negative 88,785, and the units would be newtons times millimeters. So let's go ahead and let's just divide by 1,000, and we're going to turn that into kilonewtons times millimeters. So it would be minus 88.79 kilonewton millimeters. And instead of denoting moment with a negative sign, we're going to remove that negative sign and denote it with an arrow here. So we would have 88.79 kilonewton millimeters. And now we need a rotation arrow. Well, since this is a negative sign here, that means it's opposite what I consider to be positive up here. Because technically what this means is that I have a negative moment rotating counterclockwise. Well, a negative counterclockwise rotation just means opposite counterclockwise, which is clockwise. So pretty much whenever you get a negative sign, just drop the minus sign and flip your arrow to the opposite direction. And that would be my moment about D caused by that 450 Newton force here at point A. And that's how you would solve the first one, part A. Okay, well, part B is saying we're going to use this moment that we just found here, this rotational force that we just found, and we're going to apply a force at point B that creates the same type of moment that is the smallest amount of force that we can have possible. All right, well, we know what our moment has to be. It has to be 88.79 kilonewton millimeters clockwise rotation. And we're looking for the smallest force that we are going to apply here at point B. Well, looking at our moment equation right here, when we are looking for the smallest force, that means that we got to have the largest distance to create the same moment. So as force decreases, your distance will have to increase to make the same moment. Just like if your force increases, your distance is going to have to go down to create the same moment value. So since we are looking at the smallest force possible, we need the largest dimension possible to equal the same moment value here. Well, what is my largest distance from D to B? Well, the largest distance to D to B is basically a straight line right to point B. So this would be my distance value right here, is the largest distance that I can get to point B. All right. Well, now we have to find that distance value. Well, if we look at what forms here, we just have a right triangle here where this is dimension here was given at the top. That dimension all the way across is 300 millimeters. And then we have 225 here. So we can easily get that dimension D by just taking D is equal to 225 millimeters squared plus 300 millimeters squared square root that, and we end up with 375 millimeters from D down to B. All right, so now we have our distance. We have the moment right here. Now we need the force. And we also have to determine which way our force is going. So we can have a force placed in one direction here, which we only have two available options here. So let me put it back in red. We can either have 
our force F going like this or going like that. And the reason why we can only have those two options, because remember, if we're using this dimension right here, it has to be at a 90 degree angle because you are looking at a force times a perpendicular distance. Our perpendicular distance is D, so F has to be at 90 degrees to that line of D. Well, which one of these two actually makes sense based upon our moment rotation? Well, we are rotating clockwise about point D. So which one of these forces create a clockwise rotation? Well, this bottom one right here will try to swing up and around D counterclockwise, and this one right here will swing around clockwise. So it is in fact the top one. So now we have our force orientation, we have the placement, we just need that value of F. Well, we're gonna use that moment equation of M equals F times D, and we're just gonna rearrange for F. So F is just going to be my moment divided by my distance here, and it's going to be 88.79 kilonewton times millimeters divided by 375 millimeters for my distance D, and I end up with 0 0.2368 kilonewtons of force, which let's just go ahead and turn that into newtons, multiply it by 1,000, and we get 236.8 newtons in that downward left direction. That would be my force, but since it's not strictly in an x or y orientation here, we have to find an angle. And typically you are going to be finding the angle off the horizontal x here. We're just going to call that theta. Well, how do we get theta? Well, look at it like this. If we extend this line for f down here, and we have this line coming in for d right here, and then we have this line from our edge of our box right here. Well, we can get this angle right here. Let's just call it alpha. This angle alpha is dealing with the right triangle that we solved earlier. And then this angle right here will be my theta angle because we have equal and opposite angles there. So in order to get the theta, because this needs to be 90 degrees right here, my theta, if I scroll down just a little bit here, my theta will just be 90 degrees minus off my alpha angle. All right, well, alpha, I'm just gonna be dealing with the right triangle that I had earlier. And it's just the tangent inverse of the opposite over the adjacent here, which is the 225 millimeters on the vertical side divided by the 300 millimeters on the bottom side, the horizontal side here. And I get an alpha angle for that little triangle being 36.87 degrees. Well, my alpha is just going to be 90 degrees minus off 36, or my theta angle is going to be 90 minus my alpha, which is 90 minus 36.87 degrees. And I get a total of 53.13 degrees off the horizontal. So in short, well, not really in short, but the answer for part B would be my force would be 236.8 newtons down into the left there at 53.13 degrees off of that x-axis there. And that would be my answer for part B. And that's how you would solve that entire problem. Just keep in mind with moment, the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't use a perpendicular dimension between the force and the distance. Some people tend to use parallel forces with dimensions, just make sure that you utilize a perpendicular distance. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you wanna see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out over here. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.